Uh, next is uh, Oliver Armand, Delta Golf 6, Bravo Charlie Echo. And he will give us an update about the activities on ARIS, so on the ISS orbiting Earth, and RX, which is the new planned lunar orbiter, so something uh, orbiting the moon in the future. And let me introduce Oliver. Oliver obtained his diploma in radio communications in 1986. Since 2000, he is involved in human spaceflight segment and uh, is a radio amateur since 1992. He has a special focus on satellites, digital communications, and especially educational projects. So he's also co-founder and was board member of Artis uh, in Germany from 1994 till 2015. And uh, since 2015, he's a board member of Aris International. So I'm a terror radio on the ISS. Presently, he's chairman of Aris Europe and he's vice president of Aris International. He's involved in many experiments on ISS Columbus. Uh, he was involved in the launch of Safia M and Artis Oscar 49, Rubin 5. Uh, in, with respect to Arix, uh, uh, Oliver is a co-lead together with Frank Bauer, KA3HDO. And uh, so he's the, certainly the right person to talk to us and give us an update about what's going on in the orbit around the Earth and what might go on in the future with a station orbiting the moon. Oliver, we are very interested in your update about Aris and Arix. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks a lot, Matthias. Thanks a lot, uh, Peter. And uh, to make it clear, uh, I, when I joined, when I received my license in 92, it was also the first moment when I met Peter. And I was very thankful to get his advices within um, AX25 when he was in Nordlink. So that goes very long time back that we know each other. Um, I don't have the laser pointer currently. Uh, just double click on the screen once, I think, then it should work. Mm, does not work, Florian. I don't have the control currently. Uh, let's wait a second. I think Florian is working on it. I'm working on it, so you should have control now. Okay, we will see. I don't know why, but my screen does not advance. I can see the cursor changing. Okay, I'll advance the slides for you, no problem. At okay, all. thanks. Yeah, so um, going to ARIS as an um, intention of this year, we were speaking about the possibility to take use of this AMSAT Symposium here in Germany to speak about the um, update of ARIS activities and to give an insight in the ARIX activities. So as the short wrap up, uh, you may remember that amateur radio communications happened already since 1983 on the shuttle. It was Owen Garriott in 1983 to perform the first uh, amateur radio contacts. And these 300 calls that he did with school and other persons um, convinced NASA that amateur radio on the space stations is something which is very useful to get students involved in space. So this continued under SARIX until 1999. And uh, then also Mir um, contacts have happened, and uh, also Mir then terminated in 2001. Then the ISS was built up, and uh, with the first module, the Zaria module in November, we had some uh, equipment on board, and the first uh, contact, at least, was uh, performed by William Shepard on 21st of December 2000, when he had his first school contact. And therefore, we are very glad to say that uh, we are this year in our 20th anniversary. And uh, we have 20 years of continuous amateur radio continu uh, communications on the International Space Station. And um, to make it also a little bit um, obvious, um, the 
amateur radio community was uh, requested to build a community, which is uh, the working group ARIS, to communicate with the space agencies with one voice. So that was the founding of ARIS and uh, the German part of ARIS, uh, the European part of ARIS was um, Gaston Berquet Bertels, who is well known to a lot of persons and uh, the other side was Frank Bauer. And uh, therefore it is a very long time that we are working on this topic. Next. When we are um, going to the next slide, please, Florian. I need your assistance. When we are looking to the International Space Station, um, the uh, Columbus module was launched in uh, 2008. Here on the um, on that screen, you can see on the upper right area, <clears throat> the Columbus module itself. And uh, the system here is in flight direction. That means the ISS is currently flying out of the window towards the top. So when it was launched in 2008, it was equipped with two LS band antennas. On the nadir side, that means on the side, which is directed towards the Earth. And two additional antennas for AIS and uh, ARIS have been developed by ARIS by Lou McFadden, B5DID. And um, they have been launched with SDS-129 in November 2009 and have been installed on Columbus in November 2009. And from then on, we were able to perform amateur radio calls, not only from the uh, Svesta module, but also from the uh, Columbus module itself. So in there, there had been some radios that had been used. And uh, for the Columbus module, we used the Ericsson handheld radio. But as a lot of persons may know, this radio degraded over the time and was not operable anymore. So amateur radio calls from uh, the ISS towards ground to school contacts have been performed uh, by the Kenwood radio, which is uh, located in the uh, Svesta module. Next. So for the um, ARIS uh, um, community itself, um, as a uh, background, so as uh, Matthias already said, my background is education, but I'm a radio communication engineer. And uh, so looking to ARIS and its uh, outcome, as I said, in November um, 2000, we were the first operational payload on ISS. And then uh, we are currently having two, uh, 60 to 120 educational opportunities per year where we are doing school contacts. These school contacts are organized by NASA, ESA and other agencies and they are a fixed um, part of the uh, schedule for the astronauts. So this is really an educational activity which is supported by the agencies. This leads currently to a number of more than 1,300 Iris connections that we did. And uh, we reach there, depending on the years and about the efforts, uh, we are reaching between 15 to 200,000 students each year. Uh, the numbers are changing and uh, this depends a little bit from the metrics that we are applying. But when you're looking to the lower left side, you can see the audiences which are on site um, are very, um, well crowded in normal times. Now with COVID, uh, we have a little bit uh, more um, place between the persons, but at least we already reached more than 12 to 15 million persons with the media outreach, which is also a very high number for these activities. All these activities are performed by volunteers. And uh, we are only partially founded by agencies or, or industry. And at least uh, the effort with, that we are spending per year is in the amount of 4.5 uh, million euros uh, as a volunteer support. If you are counting up all the time, all the efforts, all the travels, all the other things that we are doing on our own behalf, which are not paid by third parties, it is really a very high amount that we are spending in there. So behind of that is a group of volunteers of at about uh, 200, 300 persons assisting us uh, permanently in our work. We have, uh, when we are looking to the ISS experiment crews, 
we have uh, two to three astronauts per ISS experiment crew, which are licensed. And uh, without any license, it is um, under normal conditions not possible to perform amateur radio contacts on ground, unless you have a very special uh, reason for that. And um, so within this activities, and you can see Thomas Pesquet here on the, on the picture for on his last mission, on the Proxima mission, uh, we reached the worldwide as Iris at about 60 countries around the world. Next. Yeah, and as you can, as I just said, we are at about uh, um, 1,300 contracts. This number goes in three directions. One direction are these contacts, which are direct contacts. That means a school, a location is equipped with a radio station and is in direct contact with the ISS for an pass overhead. The other possibilities, and these are at about 500 contacts which have been uh, performed, are telebridge stations. Telebridge uh, activities are uh, when we have a relay in between. Due to the situation that some of the schools, some of the events have to happen in a certain uh, time frame. As you may know, the ISS may not be visible at that moment, at that location. And uh, it may be that another station around the world is better located. So we are using telebridges there as a relay. And on the lower line, you can see now the new situation that we had uh, also already at about five contacts, which are multi-point contacts. These are the contacts um, now for the um, COVID situation. Next. Um, what we are planning and to give an update uh, there, is uh, that uh, we are now looking forward in the next year to support the activities from Thomas Pesquet, the French uh, astronaut, and the German Matthias Maurer, who will follow up directly um, Thomas Pesquet in orbit. For uh, these activities, for Thomas Pesquet, there are 27 school contacts um, have been accepted. And that means until end of 2020, seven school contacts will be performed and um, 14 school contacts will be happen for the Pesquet Alpha mission. So it is called, it is, uh, the first one was Proxima, now it's Alpha in uh, 2021. For Matthias Maurer, I have um, also to announce that the application window for Aris Europe school contacts has been opened. It is open since beginning of September and uh, will end at the end of October. So if uh, someone wants to contact uh, Matthias Maurer within a school contact, and uh, Matthias did it already very successful in the former times also for Alex Gerst, um, you should please uh, be aware that uh, the application window ends in October 30th and uh, information about that are available on the Aris Europe website. Next. I spoke about the Telebridge stations and what you can see here, here on the screen are the Telebridge stations. Those who are uh, green are the Telebridge stations which are currently working. It's ON4 ISS, it's IK1SLD. And uh, we just heard a very interesting uh, report about the travel in South Africa. So we have also in the nears of Johannesburg, we have uh, set as six JON. And depending on the passes of the ISS, we also have uh, three locations in Australia. A new station, so uh, the Johannesburg station and the station, the station of Fred Camera AB1OC are new in our list. Uh, we are very glad that we have them because something happened due to COVID, uh, which is a little bit um, unlucky. The location of K6 DUE W5RRR and W6 SRJ are on either a school site like uh, SRJ or they are at NASA sites. And as you know, uh, all these locations in the States are still under COVID and are not accessible. The radio, amateur radio stations are not accessible. They are club stations, uh, which are 
inside uh, the sites and therefore we missed in North America three stations and therefore we are very glad that Frank uh, Fred camera added uh, his station and um, so he is operating as telebridge on the other side um, due to COVID, we had also to change our protocols and uh, the change of the protocols is uh, going in that way next please or is um, going to that situation that the pandemic uh, eliminated to the conventional opportunities for iris contacts uh, which are normally involving a lot of uh, students and uh, as you have seen on the previous pictures normally uh, everyone is standing sitting there in the uh, hall and uh, there is a queue of uh, 10 to 20 uh, children standing in the line and uh, telling their questions. Um, we already had the possibility to perform Tilbridge activities because not all the um, passes are suitable. That means we need to work with these uh, Tilbridge stations. But in the new configuration under COVID, we even had to face the situation that children are not anymore in one hall because of one and a half meter distance or two meter distance they are even due to lockdown at home. So beginning of the year when we faced this uh, new situation, we started to think about a possibility to make use of uh, these uh, web conference services as we are just uh, using it now, also working from home. And uh, so the question was similar to that, what we are just seeing here on, uh, on the Amsterdam Symposium, how to connect persons with a uh, web conference tool and to transmit uh, the information towards the ISS. So we are not making use of the quarter of the 100 currently, but the ISS, so we are a little bit more lower, but we made use of, use of our RS Telebridge stations. And we are very happy that uh, the operators of the Telebridge stations really put a lot of personal engagement into the situation to build up uh, um, their equipment to enhance their equipment also for digital communications and uh, to the internet connections. So this offered the opportunity for the children to still have very interesting projects ongoing and also for the teachers. So it was very welcomed by them. And a lot of persons could join. And uh, same as here, we also streamed the information into YouTube so that uh, we don't had a big audience in the hall, but a big audience joining by internet. And uh, for one of the school contacts, um, there was a, a question, which was a very actual question, which was placed to Chris Cassidy on Orbit KF5KDR. And the question was, how has the COVID-19 pandemic affected you while you are in space? You can see that the children are really looking forward um, to think about these things and how it affects also amateur radio and uh, the work in space. What you can see, and uh, now my cursor is working, thanks. Um, what you can see here is the ISS uh, on the top. You have the Telebridge station for that, and the Telebridge station is connected to a conference tool. We have a moderator if you are doing such an amateur radio call who is doing the introduction and who is a little bit uh, the um, moderator for the call um, pass. And uh, to the conference tool, teachers and students are connected. This means you have to train them first how to speak. And the same applies here to any conferences. They have, you have to place them in mood. Uh, they have to have a, a good mic working so that the communication is really working perfectly. And beside of that, and uh, it's a role like uh, Florian in this um, activity here, it's uh, you need a stream manager who is acting there really as the, uh, the register, the regie for um, streaming these things and uh, you still also have uh, you need some uh, persons being remotely connected to observe either the downlink of the ISS to see that the downlink is really as expected or even to watch the YouTube or the, um, the, the channels the internet channels about the information so it is the role of Matthias currently which is uh, more or less also represented here but what a lot of persons do not uh, know is that within a live contact for the ISS, we have also one feed in NASA because we need to get 
absolutely live information if for example this pass is uh, the the contact is not able to be established due to the fact that the astronaut may not be on place at the right moment or if he has issues like uh, not being able to activate the system or not finding a cable or the mic so there is still also one link to NASA existing and uh, this shows you a little bit the complexity which is similar to that setup what that we are just using here and uh, therefore chapeau to the AMSAT DL team to establish this um, conference today. And uh, what happened recently is that uh, you, I presented last year already the fact that we have a new ARIS interoperable radio system on board. So the equipment was launched on SpaceX 20 already um, some months ago. And uh, recently the equipment has been installed in ISS Columbus by Chris Cassidy and it replaced the Ericsson handheld radio. So the Ericsson was something which was working with five watts and was degrading more and more. So only offering two watts. And now we have a system which is back offering something like uh, more than 10 dBs plus. So the first school contacts have already been performed with this equipment and it really works fine. And the second part is that uh, you yourself can also test the system because between the school contacts, the system is uh, currently uh, configured to serve as a uh, crossband repeater. So with the uplink frequency 145-990 on two meters with a subtone of uh, 67 hertz, you can receive the information or the, the voice on a downlink for 437-800. And when you're listening in, you will see that this frequency is heavily used. That means this crossband repeater currently is in heavy use and, um, uh, over Europe. So I'm sitting here in the north of Europe um, in Bremen. So for me, I was not yet able to be heard in the uplink, but same applies to me as for Florian. I have very limited uh, HF possibilities and uh, standing on the balcony with the arrow antenna, I was unable to beat against these uh, crocodiles which are on the channel. So the first activity activation had happened on September uh, 2nd uh, at about midnight and uh, from then on it was very good used, uh, well, very well used. What we are continuing to work is that uh, it is not the only interoperable radio system that we will have on ISS. The next box, which is identical to the previous shown, will be launched and will be mounted uh, in the Zvesta module. So it replaces also there the Kenwood radio, the old one, so that we have two identical sets on ISS, which acts uh, as a uh, mean for communications for the Russian module and for the US US, for, for the European um, American module. Two identical system means they are ex uh, inter-exchangeable in case of failures. They are, the crew training is reduced because you only have one equipment that you have to teach at two locations. Okay, you have to learn about the specialities of the locations of uh, the Svesta module and the uh, Columbus module, but this is not that grave. Um, if you have two systems on orbit, you have also the need for training on ground. One training is done in uh, Houston and uh, one training is done in Moscow. So that means we also need two identical radio sets for those locations and uh, still for engineering purposes and um, a reference model. So we are already at five and so we are ending up to eight to 10 systems which will be built up uh, in the next months. So the developer team around that is uh, Lou McFadden, Dave Taylor. Uh, so it is really a uh, very uh, interesting development, very challenging and very helpful. What we are facing is to make it clear, ISS will still be tended to be operated for the next 10 to 15 years. So this update after 20 years is now something to really enable us in the future. Another activity was that we had the HEM video in orbit and it was downloaded for repair. The repair is ongoing and uh, we are tending to uh, get it uh, uploaded uh, probably beginning of 2021 if everything goes fine. So the failure has been identified, the bot has been exchanged 
and uh, the uh, modulation uh, parameters have been updated. Some very little modifications uh, were able to be done. To get it uploaded, it was uh, mandatory that we don't change the hardware because this would uh, requiring a uh, completely new certification of the modules. And so we only were able to do some slight software adoptions. This was uh, prepared and this is currently ongoing here in Europe. Um, another activity that uh, is uh, ongoing is the ARIS Pi. You may have heard about the ESA initiative for the Astro Pi. These are Raspberry Pis which are on the ISS for fly your code, fly your experiment. And uh, we used these um, uh, Astro Pis for several experiments already. In, for example, in the frame of the Technical University Berlin Marconista project. And uh, this means we have to lean then for special time from ESA education. Uh, to become independent from that, uh, we are developing an own Aris Pi, and uh, the adaption, uh, ideas for that have been already collected, and um, the uh, interfaces functionalities are defined, and the development for such an activity is currently under planning, depends a little bit of founding, and starts again at the end of 2020 with a breadboard. Um, we want to have some functionalities on the Aris Pi to be able to control the Kenwood radio over this uh, control interface, the cut. We also need audio connections because if you want to do SSTV and <coughs> sorry, SSTV and other uh, audio related um, communication protocols, we need to um, uh, have some uh, special interfaces. So this is an ongoing activity and um, we are certain that at the end of 21, we may have this Iris Pi in orbit. And uh, we are now coming to the area of uh, the next uh, uh, project uh, part. So for special conditions, uh, we also are planning to have an HEM communicator. So in former times, we named it uh, HEM TV2 for DVB-S2 or DVB-2X and other modulation form, forms, formats. But what it shows currently, and you, if you have 5G in mind and other things, it would be fine to have an SDR radio communication system on ISS, which is dedicated for amateur radio use, uh, so that we can use it for different protocols and uh, as a test bed for communication protocols, but also for modulations and so on. So. This is something that we want to do, and uh, this leads me a little bit also to the situation um, of the next topic, because we are now entering the area of Arex. Arex is amateur radio for explorations, and uh, this is now the link towards um, the Lunart project, because um, we are not going that far that we are on the surface of the moon. We are expecting more to be in between the, of the Earth and the moon. And uh, there we are planning to do some uh, um, developments um, to support amateur radio on the Lunar Gateway. And the idea Peter already showed the lunar lander concept and uh, you can see it here on the left as an uh, example. So don't trust these pictures because they are changing so frequently that um, everything is uh, already outdated when they are published. So, but the main structure is that uh, there will be a uh, power and propulsion element which uh, will be facing towards the sun. You can see the sun vector here to the, towards the top left. You will have something like the habitation and logistics outpost. Those both modules will be under current, uh, current plan, will be mounted together and will be launched uh, on one rocket. And uh, the, to fetch to this time, schedule you have just seen also the call for ideas from ESA and uh, to fetch the schedule to these activities it is really hard because you have to sustain to, to make a lot of developments and we are not professionals we are volunteers doing it in our free time 
That means normally our development processes are um, five to eight times longer than professional ones because professionals are working eight to 10, hour, 10 hours a day and we have to fit with one to two hours per day. So this gives you a little bit the impression what happens if we are facing these projects. And therefore, as uh, Peter said, um, the Lunat and uh, Matthias uh, showed it, uh, the Lunat uh, project is also challenging to do something. To build up a small communication unit uh, is already uh, something which is very interesting. So what we are facing is the logistic module currently because the logistics module is something which will launch later but uh, it has special purposes and so we said what we want to achieve is that uh, we want to perform amateur radio uh, we want to offer amateur radio services um, on the gateway so we also, some uh, time ago, we already started to work with AMSATS and uh, ARIS together under the RX uh, activities uh, folder on uh, concepts and we presented it to NASA. And therefore, this is not a concurrency activity. It, is, it goes in line with the uh, um, other experiments and uh, pro projects which are ongoing. So it is in cooperation of the AMSATS uh, with, Arix, uh, with ARIS. ARIS is offering the educational expertise and uh, the access to the ISS, for example, for a test bed or other activities. And uh, the AMSAT is uh, offering the technology background to that. But as we are all AMSAT members, so we are in personal union, the same persons. So, what we are facing for amateur radio purposes is that we are expecting that uh, crew on the Lunar Gateway will be only there for one to two months a year. That means for the remaining time, the Lunar Gateway is unmanned and the equipment needs to be used uh, remotely controlled. What we are currently facing and we are speaking about the next five years, um, <clears throat> We want to perform school contacts. So this is the primary intention to provide an um, educational outreach contact from schools to the gateway crew so that uh, a possibility is there for adding these uh, knowledge in schools. So that means uh, we have uh, something like the audio only or with video, uh, the, uh, the video downlink possibilities as we know it currently. This is not impossible. It is uh, equipment that we are know uh, that we know. SSTV and uh, a lot of persons may say, "Hey, why do you do you take these antique things?" Uh, SSTV showed in the last time a revival because it is easy to be received and uh, decoded, and it offers children, it offers pupils, students a capability to uh, work to to enter digital communications on a very simple level. To have later on high professional uh, communications as we got it presented here on the um, AMSAT Symposium is something which is a later add-on capability. And this is a point for the experiment setup and uh, op um, optional operations because we are not limited to SSTV, but if we have the right SDR concept in place, we can also change the concept later on. And uh, at least... Um, when crew is on the International Space Station, a lot of crew members appreciated uh, the possibility to go to the uh, mic and to, to do random contacts. Um, so also there in, on Saturdays and Sundays, uh, they had their leisure time and uh, the, we experienced uh, in former times also a lot of um, crew contacts directly. And uh, the robotic engagement, and here we are coming now to these uh, lunar activities, it is also that uh, for 24 seven over the whole year, we can use then, uh, we can serve as a relay. We may also offer direct information, for example, if we have on the logistic module, a camera pointing towards the Mars, we can, uh, towards the stars, towards the moon, we can also do observations. We can also um, surf there, for example, between Earth, Lunar Gateway, Earth, 
using APRS, we can also do telerobotic activities, but it can also be done towards the moon. So we are there in the same area, and therefore I said uh, the Lunar project is something which goes in line with our concept. We may serve as a relay between the lunar surface and Earth. We can do activities by ourselves, and uh, one experiment uh, what, that we are really facing is to make uh, weak signal challenges and this goes a little bit also into the direction of very special modulation um, methods. <clears throat> so what I want only to show is that uh, we have different payload concepts. The first system is that we will be an, uh, attached to the logistics module, um, to one of the next ones. And uh, we are targeting a delivery date of early 24. So from now on, it's in something like two to three years. To achieve this, we are facing a uh, setup which is based on uh, existing equipment. So everything is always depending also about the position where you are located on the uh, module itself. And uh, to return to the picture, you should have in mind, this is a module and uh, there may be therefore the need to install an antenna. There is an antenna uh, required to contact the earth which needs to be pointing because the position of the gateway is periodically changing over the time and we may have a need for a second antenna towards the moon to communicate. So antenna is one challenge. If we have a camera on board, pointing of the camera towards the, the area of interest, maybe the lunar surface, is also something which is challenging. So what we are looking forward is uh, to make reuse in the current process of uh, the ARIS SAT um, housing. That means we expect to have this uh, installed maybe inside of the logistic module or outside. This is still open, but um, it is a box that we are facing. Attached to the box is a deployable boom. And uh, on the top, there is the hat, and this contains the antenna, but also cameras. We are looking forward to have a SDR radio on board and for example, also with uh, DVB-S 2X uh, communications. And as said, our main goal is not to provide it as high level platform, uh, development platform for enthusiasts uh, in the radio communication area. It is really dedicated uh, for the use of children. That means uh, we want really to interface also to experiments for STEAM, for um, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. In Germany, we call it MINT. Um, yeah, some figures about the uh, intended uh, mass. So we are speaking about a uh, box which is 60 times 60 times 30 centimeters wide. We are expecting something like an on-orbit mass of 35 kilogram. We expect to be powered by 250 watts. And uh, it is, as you can see, without any interconnections to other things. So it is a, like a self-standing payload, which only need to be powered. And uh, for all the other things, we don't rely to the direct um, connections of the um, spacecraft. Major challenge, and uh, Peter already touched it, uh, yes, temperature is a major challenge on uh, these orbits. Um, radio communication, and this goes in line what we already saw with uh, Peter. So that means we are expecting that uh, we have an, uh, a communication link, which is in the area of uh, 10 gigahertz. And uh, we are facing something like, uh, for the uplink, the C-band. <clears throat> so that means uh, we have different users. We have on the one hand side the schools which are expected uh, in uh, receiving the signals only. We have amateur radio stations as our QO100 uh, users who are able to receive and transmit. And we may have some experimental scientific users which are also, as they are using amateur radio bands, needs to be licensed. 
on the other side, we need to control the system. And for the control, we are expecting that we again receive the 10 gigahertz, that we are controlling it in the C-band. And as you can see, the idea is to make use of the existing amateur radio systems like uh, Bochum or Gunhilly. And uh, we also expect, and this is the planning, you have seen our RS Telebridge network, and this goes a little bit in line also with uh, the same interests for the amateur video, but also for the uh, lunar gateway. We expect that uh, we can use these stations as well so that we have a kind of telebridge station. That means persons who are also there for a speci specific time, not being able to look towards the moon, towards the gateway, can be connected. So this is uh, the main operation. For those who know Iris since long time, <clears throat> These radio communication systems on the space shuttle and uh, also on the ISF have also served for con contingency services. So that means there we are also planning to have something like a downlink capability and uh, up and downlink capability in the 70 centimeters band. It is very low, it is yes, it is known but it is very stable and simple to be used. So that means uh, this is uh, an idea which is there that we are using it as a primary contingency um, channel. And uh, for any downlinks, um, direct downlinks only, we can also use the X-band. Yeah, and uh, therefore this is the operational concept which is in behind. And when we are looking a little bit to the concept uh, itself, uh, so currently to give you only an insight in one of the working papers, we are expecting that we have something like an X-band antenna here, which is um, uh, for the downlink. We expect to have something like the C-band uplink. We have the uh, UHF uh, part there. That means classical uh, setup with band filters and uh, for the receiving part and uh, amplifiers for the transmitting part and uh, demodulation capabilities. And then we are entering up in the uh, command and uh, control area. So this is a little bit um, a draft status. It does not show some other important interfaces um, to the other side because this will be generic. Uh, that means we are expecting for the phase two, for the Mark II system, which is the follow-up, we are expecting to be connected to the communication uh, link inside of the uh, uh, lunar gateway. Uh, we need also some other purposes. We may also deploy this radio outside of the cabin. That means in the unpressurized area. That means we have something like a digital communication uh, means where we have a small panel inside of the uh, of the um, capsule for the crew for the man machine interface for the for the crew interface these interfaces are not shown here this is only an example currently um, which is uh, a little bit outdated but should, should show you the intention that we are using there um, SDR radios uh, receiver boards and so on so it's a modular process Life cycle, yes, uh, so currently we are in the area that we are facing the uh, phase zero there. That means uh, for the classical approach, we are expecting um, to present it, uh, we wanted to present it at the end of this year uh, to NASA. So it is planned for November. <clears throat> and then it's going on with the different phases. And uh, yeah. This is something uh, where we are working on. And uh, therefore, for doing all these experiments, um, either on the ARIS side, but also on the RX side, we are doing that at volunteers. And therefore, who is able to join, who is interested to join is welcomed. Please contact us. Uh, my coordinates will follow soon. And for those uh, who may not be able to support us in person, but uh, are able to provide us with some donations. We are absolutely thankful. All these things, and same applies to AMSA DL, all these projects are only able to be performed with donations and uh, your support. And therefore, when you're going to the Iris Internet site, you will find a donate button. And uh, 
So uh, taking that opportunity, you are doing something very great for the children because uh, the smile on the faces of the children is uh, that what we really uh, take as our um, outcome of the efforts that we are doing partwise in our leisure time, partwise in night times, and uh, where we are spending a lot of efforts for. So this leads me to the end of the presentation. And uh, yeah, any questions, Matthias, ball back to you. Yeah, thank you, Oliver, for your interesting presentation with an update about ARIS and RX and Outlook to RX. Um, I haven't seen any questions on the two forum. Um, I think you, you presented everything so clear <laughs> that there are no, uh, no further questions.